Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, this is my YouTube channel, Sherelle Thinks, where I talk about all things health anxiety related. I, um, whew, I'm out of breath from running up the stairs. I currently have a sinus infection, so I'm a little bit bunged up. Um, but I wanted to talk about a really scary thing that came up on one of my ECGs. It was 10 months ago and <laughs> So funny story, bit of a backstory. I actually went to A and E because I had an impacted stool. Um, I was very, very constipated. Um, where I had had a diet change. Um, and yeah, I had to go in and have some help for that issue. Anyway, whilst I was there, um, I was quite anxious just because A and E tends to make me anxious anyway. Um, and when my when they you know, check my heart rate when you put your finger in the pulse thing. It was like 117 or something like that. So because of that, the nurse was like, oh my goodness, we need to do an ECG. And I said to her like, oh, it's fine. And I was like, it's just like white coat syndrome. Like I always get a high heart rate and high blood pressure when I'm in a hospital setting. I was like, I'm really not concerned about it. But she was really insistent that we should do an ECG. She wasn't happy with the fact that my heart rate was so high. So we did the ECG and um i i could see that she was like looking at it quite funny so she was like i'll be back now um she went to go and get a doctor and the doctor came over to me and was like oh has there ever been any history of um like fainting or sudden death in your family and i was like no why and he was like oh and he uh, he knew i had health anxiety because i had like told him already um, and he was like, he was like, I know this is going to like massively trigger you. He, he was like, but your QT interval is prolonged. Um, and he was like, but I'm going to go and check with a cardiologist and just double check that this is correct. In the meantime, I made the mistake of Googling long QT syndrome whilst I was waiting for this cardiologist to come down. And it's not good. It's not a nice thing to have. Um... And I was more panicked, especially when I read that there's a 50% chance that you can pass it on to your children. So I was beside myself with worry, really bad. And the cardiologist came back down, uh, came down, looked at my ECG and said um, that he felt that the the machine was wrong and that he kind of hand calculated. So with your QT interval, when you, you when it's done on an ECG machine, the formula that is used to calculate it is something called the Bazet formula. Now, the Bazet formula, it underestimates um, for um, heart rates below 60 and overestimates for heart rates above 100. So it's only really good to use if your heart rate is between 60 and 100. Anything out of that, it's likely to get it wrong. So um, the machine allegedly got it wrong. He recalculated it and it was lower than the machine. I couldn't accept that. They, they were kind of trying to rush me out the door and I wanted to ask more questions. So um, I then ended up going back to A&E the next day and having a, a, I, I requested another ECG where my QT was slightly lower. It was 450. Oh, that, that's what I want to say. So with your QT interval, it's um, normally between like 350 and 450. Um, anything kind of above 460 um, is considered prolonged. So um, yeah, the next time I went, it was more, it was at the higher end, but more in the normal range. Um, I still wasn't satisfied. This was like when my health anxiety was, I was having a bit of a dip. So I ended up booking in to see a electrophysiologist because I wanted somebody that specifically um, knew a lot about heart, you know, rhythm problems. And he did his own readings and basically said to me that I should ignore the machine, that they're unreliable. And his calculations for me were between 440 and 450. Um, I still wasn't satisfied. So I then had a 24 hour um, halt monitor, which um, came back as normal, apart from a couple of ectopic beats and um, some episodes of tachycardia where my heart rate was high just due to anxiety. Um, but the whole experience was utterly terrifying and to be honest even now I still worry about it because it's just that one of those things that's in the back of your head and it's not a simple diagnosis if you know what I mean um 
but I, I don't imagine there's going to be a lot, a lot of you on here that have had this problem. But if you have had prolonged QT on any of your ECGs and you want to share your story down below, please do. Because I know how terrified I was back then. And I think, you know, for it to be as simple as a miscalculation of the machine, it's so scary when, you know, somebody a medical professional tells you, you you potentially have this awful problem and then they turn around and they're like oh sorry it's just the machine like it's for people like us with health anxiety that's like a big thing um so I think it's important to remember that the ECGs that we have done in A&E might not always be complete accurate completely accurate and sometimes you need a cardiologist to actually hand measure it and to calculate it without the machine and to use a different formula. So there's other formulas. Like I said, the Bazet one is the one that's typically used, but it's not great for higher heart rates. So there's ones like Federica. Um, <clears throat> there's a few others that are better when your heart rate is that high. Um, and actually, there's, there's actually an online QTC um, calculate where you can put in your heart rate and your QT, and it'll give you the QTC, which is the corrected QT. Um, and when I did that with mine, it was like a lot lower than the machine was telling me. So that kind of reassured me a little bit. But if you have had this problem, please tell me down below in the comments, because I'm like so curious as to see if this is maybe more common than I'm thinking. Um, it was one of my worst moments, you know, for that doctor to come in and tell me that. Um, and then to quickly tell me that, no, it, it, no, it, it's wrong. And I couldn't accept it. You know, I couldn't accept it for a long, long time. So let me know. If this has happened to you, share your story down below. And uh, I mean, I hope this video, if if you have it, I just want you to know that I it happened to me um, and I didn't end up having it. Um, so I know how scary it is basically, but take care guys. I'll speak to you soon.